Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the fourth episode of this panel discussion. We would be discussing about the business transformation which are happening around sustainability. And uh, some of these business transformations is leading to some impactful outcomes. Now, thinking through from what Winky said earlier in terms of motivation, and uh, there, are, there are still people who require that motivation this direction of sustainability and uh, uh, maybe Tanmay, I would come to you and uh, as one of the leading companies, uh, uh, what does good look like or uh, what is a good outcome of sustainability in flag? Do you have some examples which you can share? Yeah, well, I think thanks, uh, Santosh. And I must say that uh, really echo with what uh, Trinity you were mentioning and, and Nilu, Nilu, you spoke about it is there is no competition in this space it is it is collaboration at scale it is and then that's where technology helps uh, and it is not about one function one department one organization it is it is organization wide right so i think that's 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 very important i think uh, and i'll come to your question uh, santosh uh, as as leaders one of the things that we need to do is actually demystify this and, and, and demystify this very concept of sustainability and, and every small step matters. And I could relate you know, with what you were saying that simply just putting your laptops on sleep mode or, or shut off mode when not in use is, is 74% of energy reduction. I think that's amazing. Uh, yeah, so I think we need to, to demystify this to everyone in the organization. So that people can embrace it, I'm sure they they value it, uh, and and that's very important. So, for me, what good looks like is is as an organization when we take our strategic business decisions on on new product launches, on on pricing, on where to locate our manufacturing facilities, what kind of facilities to put in. Sustainability needs to become one one big element of of a decision maker, uh, and I think uh, we're still a while away. Uh, while I think there are a lot of positive steps that are being taken in that direction, but my vision for good would be that this becomes a key factor in decision making, in strategic decision making. Yeah, and and I think that's the behaviors that we want across the organization. Uh, and I think the the metrics or outcome, which is about greenhouse gases, which is about using cleaner energies, green hydrogen that's happening. Uh, and I think that's all that's all an outcome. As long as people are aware, as long as we demystify it for them, as long as we know that this is a very, very important factor uh, in, in our decision making, uh, then the enablers will will follow suit. So, uh, I think the outcome metrics, to your point, uh, from our organization perspective, uh, like I said, is about sustainable agriculture uh, and, and sustainable sourcing. So how do we move the, the needle around it? It is about consuming less and less is more, where, where, where less amount of plastic that goes into the system and the environment, collecting back 100% of what we send out into the market is, is a big goal which is happening across the Coca-Cola system. Yeah, and then uh, logistics distribution are coolers, and we place in the market. How could that be more sustainable and in, in, in emitting less greenhouse gases? So I think there are some very hard metrics that measure such outcomes, but I think that is not the the, the big one. But the big one is how do we really demystify it and make it organization wide, really? So I think uh, that's that's what I would say is. Yeah, but allow when you said less is more. And uh, you know the the and it's it's uh, when we talk about sustainability, it is something that need to be integrated into everything which we do. It should not stand out by itself, right? It, 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 I I usually say this that uh, it's the difference between the mixture and the compound, uh, high school chemistry. 
and uh, you know it, it it need to be more like the compound it, it's not a mixture that uh, uh, it's uh, it, it has to be built into every profession now i mean uh, i have a book with the shelf uh, behind which says uh, uh, how a, a chartered accountant can save the planet and, um, so I think it's it's it has to be built into every profession that way. Uh, Sudarshan, uh, coming back to you, you you mentioned about uh, design of the products and how sustainability features it create and what. So can you share some examples? Yeah. So you know, and just uh, uh, you know, I want to go back to what uh, Tanmay said. Uh, he I think he nailed it. You know. The sustainability needs to be a part of the strategy as you start with it. I'll kind of uh, tell you a you know, product of the designing a story, right? You know, I, all of you know that, I don't know whether you know this, medical device product development takes more than five, to, uh, four to five years for a product launch. And the choice of material has a big impact on the functionality of the device. And often as engineers, we design and choose materials that will provide best functionality. That's what we focus on, right? And uh, one of the key challenges, uh, you know, I have faced in my career several times is that how do you balance the functionality, performance, and cost? Um, remember, as I'm talking through this, I'm not talking about sustainability because that's how the engineers mind are, right? But the new factor that has come into play in the last decade is also sustainability of a medical device. And what this does is that it limits the choices of materials. You know, it makes you think first and requires you to think hard on the selection of materials for product and packaging, right? And what that is doing is that that's driving innovation. You know, as an R&D guy, I'm all about innovation, right? So now here's another challenge. I don't have to just focus on functionality and specifications and costs, but now I have sustainability. So that's a key thing. It, it's, it's, it's helping the community. And, uh, you know, just a quick example is that, you know, I'll keep it very short. Uh, you know, I was in, in one of my uh, product experiences, we were designing a product, uh, uh, you know, for for sustainable requirements, right? And what happened was that, you know, we went to a scenario where we were designing a packaging material to change the method of packaging to reduce the cost, and then we thought it was sustainable material. And uh, so, we, as an engineer, you know, you get excited. You have a, you have cracked the best thing since loaf of bread. So we can we in this process, what we did was we completely overlooked the the breathability of the material, for example, because we have to sterilize it. And when we sterilize it, one of the methods we use is ETO, ethylene oxide, right? And unlike gamma and E beam radiations, you need a flow path for the ethylene oxide gas to pass through. So we go along and then we develop this packaging and we are about to say that victory, right? Then we find out that the product is not sterile. Um, and what that made us realize is that, you know, we have now put this in the practice is that Sustainability has to be from the right from the beginning. Look at this, all the elements of it with the functionality, right? So, um, so it's an important aspect. So, as Tanmay said, it cannot, it has to be in the strategy. So, in our uh, gate stage gate process, now sustainability is one of the elements where we have to demonstrate uh, in the beginning itself as we do the uh, idea stage and the planning stage before we go into development, design, and uh, qualification and launch, right? So I think that, you know, I'm excited. All of these learnings only strengthen us to move forward in the right direction. And, uh, you know, I'm very proud of the industry that I work for because, you know, every day uh, my actions uh, impacts a patient and the patient could be my mother, my friend, teacher and friend. So it's, it's exciting for me to come up with new solutions, design, product development. So that's where I would put it. Thank you, Sudeshan. Trinity, uh, on the hyperscaler phase, uh, you know, every drop leads to that mighty impact, right? I mean, but if it is the smallest change which happens in a hyperscale kind of a situation, uh, it, it kind of results into a bigger impact which you can create. Uh, um, well, would you be able to share some uh, experiences about how this good or these kind of innovations, what you do, how it results into a bigger impact? Yeah, I don't know uh, how, how how much the audience or, or panel here is aware, but Google has been uh, really pioneering a lot of innovation around um, sustainable IT or green IT for a while. Uh, and I'd say that, um, you know, we uh, were and we're certainly very collaborative. So if anybody would like to learn some of the 
the lessons we've learned or tools uh, that we've implemented, we're, we're always happy to share. Um, but some of the ways that, we, uh, uh, that we've made impact is through um, not just optimizing, but leveraging kind of our expertise in deep neural learning um, and uh, semi-autonomous uh, machine learning to uh, continue to improve so that systems for optimization become more and more uh, uh, accurate, um, more and more optimized over time and continue to learn and improve. We've uh, actually improved the efficiencies of our data centers uh, over 40% just from um, uh, creating some of those models. So there are a ton of different uh, ways that uh, that the choices that we make in uh, in IT and in how we create um, uh, uh, the systems that we have across the cloud space, uh, the uh, the supply chain that we implement, the uh, the processes and tools, how we check and verify what's actually being used. Um, and how we, we raise awareness. So it's it's a governance system, it's a new innovation system, and it's a continuous journey of, uh, of improving. Um, what we often talk about with a lot of organizations is, you know, we can help you quantify your, your IT carbon footprint and what your workloads are, and then we can help you either migrate to a, a carbon neutral environment, but then going beyond carbon neutrality to actually make you aware of the gross carbon emissions associated with your direct workloads, even in a cloud environment. So there are a ton of ways that just at a, a at a direct IT perspective, we can make an impact. Then when you think about how that impacts uh, even more broadly, you think about even just the, across the portfolio of what Google brings to the table, that, um, that direct consumer relationship, that ability to bring awareness, uh, that ability to start connecting value chains. As Tom and I mentioned earlier, you know, it's about demystifying, but it's really hard to demystify when we have uh, all these different proliferation of standards and methodologies. Even if you have a carbon intensity number from a supplier, you're not really sure what went into that uh, that metric anyway. So how do you measure when you don't have a standard metric? And I think what uh, what what an organization with the with the data access and technology access that Google and and others like Google uh, may have is really about um, bringing verification to some of those. Uh, pieces to some of the elements across the supply chain so that we can start to um, move beyond uh, these kind of broad calculations that are uh, that make things un and unclear and start to move more towards a financial accounting models in our carbon accounting in our sustainability understanding bringing new context in the decision criteria that we make so that we know uh, we're not uh, solving one problem and creating a creating another one and these are all big data challenges, but to Nilo's point, you have to do that responsibly. And so it starts in the very beginning at how we sort of improve that in our data centers and in our in our activities internally and continue to improve it, uh, create a system of constant change and improvement and self-check and self-reflection. And then the second piece is bringing your customers, your suppliers on that journey with you, sharing, collaborating, and then continuing to reach beyond to uh, to other, uh, uh, you know, consumers or other businesses, and just that that sharing continues to 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 expand. Now we have enough data and understanding at all these different endpoints across a value chain that we can start to demystify. That we can start to get towards a common standard. We have a common standard and a common metric. We understand what we need to do, and that's the direction we need to go. And I think the opportunity that we have at uh, at, at Google and other companies like Google. Well, thank you, and for the the uh, you know, to to the news point and what you referred to is the way in which uh, you are looking into those matrices which I mentioned, the power usage effectiveness, or some of those kind of things with big data centers and all those things. And from a consumer perspective, uh, I can also say that Google Maps now brings out carbon emissions. And uh, you know, so you can decide that uh, uh, how you want to travel now, and uh, which route you need to travel with the lesser emission. So thank you for that as right. well. Uh, yeah, and uh, all these, uh, uh, you know, uh, carry all these neural networks to start functioning. You need that coffee in the morning, and uh, <laughs> you know, and it's kind of uh, really coming back to you to ask you in terms of. You know, it's, it's one of the oldest commodities, but still there is quite a bit of innovation happening in that space as well in terms of bringing that 
consumer experience. And uh, as you mentioned at the start, you are one of the uh, new uh, ones uh, uh, who are there. And how do you think that all those innovations which you are doing is adding to the consumer experience? It is. It is exciting. And, uh, you know, it is the consumers, our consumers, that have really brought that to the forefront and really helped uh, with the paradigm shift and the way that uh, the industries are looking at sustainability. And uh, I, again, to leverage what Trinity was just saying, you know, using the platform as that tool for the various suppliers and vendors and uh, stakeholders to really collaborate effectively, because we're all trying to solve the same problems. And we can really all work together so that it, it is beneficial to all the stakeholders and truly uh, sustainable. Sustainable in terms of uh, wanting to maintain that that level of, um, of responsibility to all of our pillars, our stakeholders. So it, absolutely exciting stuff that, that uh, we've seen and will continue to see in, a, in our industry here. Thank, thank you all. And, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of uh, really wonderful to see that uh, it's, it's, it's kind of all, all of us coming together. In, I mean, each one of you from a different kind of base segment or a pro professional side of the industry. But uh, almost everybody right from the beginning, he said that it's the common language that we need to be sustainable. So thank you.